Uh, thanks to Senator Meyer for that overview. Um, and I understand it is very controversial. Um, and I think certainly uh, our committee, when we talked about the range of possible responses, um, our committee was uh, pleasantly surprised at um, how seriously the state of Connecticut um, is taking um, all of the gun control issues and is responding. Um, so what we're going to do now is um, go into a Q&A session. Um, Sarah, can I find Sarah? Uh, our uh, Associate Minister, Sarah Varaska, has a microphone. Um, so I would, uh, what I will do is uh, kind of select people. Um, we have about 10-15 uh, minutes for Q&A. Um, once again, I would ask that you phrase specific questions and not statements um, to Senator Meyer. Um, and I will point at whoever's next and ask um, Sarah to then take the mic over there. Um, so I think that gentleman over there was the first to get his hand up. So, Good morning. Ed Bartlett. Um, too often we see our legislature reacting to issues and not being proactive. Although I don't agree with the letter of what the church says, what they're saying is correct. Why are not we not being proactive? Why are we not preventing, educating, and enforcing the laws that we do have? Why are we focusing on a single issue like this instead of the problems in general? Okay. Well, the, the current, current laws really have, have not, not worked. I mean, the great example is what the officer showed you with the uh, assault weapon. That, that kind of assault weapon, although this is just a BB gun, that kind of assault weapon is legal because of definitional issues. Um, do you want to speak to that about law enforcement? What, what your experience has I'm been about? enforcement by the police because they're handcuffed. I'm talking about the enforcement and creation of penalties. How can we stop the straw buyers? When we have a straw buyer, how come in, uh, when a straw buyer in the case of uh, Fast and Furious, they couldn't stop them because the Fourth Amendment prevented the ATF agent in charge from getting the search warrant. Yet in New York, the straw buyer for the killer of the first responders was in fact arrested. So it's not on the law enforcement. But why are we not giving law enforcement <coughs> Laws. You're right, uh, Ed, to a certain extent. It, it is and it is not law enforcement. You need to, if, if people could look at not just Connecticut, but the country as a whole, like you're saying, there are other issues. There are the laws, many of the laws we have here in Connecticut are effective. There's some of them that, you know, many people believe need some adjusting. However, the laws we have here, when the national assault rifle ban expired. Connecticut maintained our rules here. As a state, we can have stricter regulations than the federal government. Our laws do not apply across this country. And we've seen these problems, as I brought about the straw buyers, these gun shows, where anybody walks in, buys a gun, there's no background check. I don't think anybody in this conversation that is coming at it reasonably is looking to take weapons away from law-abiding citizens. What we are looking for is to make sure they don't get in the hands of the people they shouldn't be. And one of the ways to do that is one you need to try to adopt some of the laws Connecticut has on the books and other states have on the books throughout the country. But that's gonna be on a national level. <clears throat> You know, here today we're trying to talk about what can we adjust here in Connecticut to make it a little better here. I'm a gun owner. I'm a gun enthusiast. But I also consider myself as a responsible adult. I've seen both sides of this argument. I've seen the carnage. When Senator Myers came to me and asked me my honest opinion, he didn't, he didn't cringe, he didn't hold me back. I told him exactly how I felt on some of these topics. This is an open dialogue. Everybody needs to bring something to the table. And it's not going to be just limited to guns, but I think that's where we need to start. 
Thanks. Um, and the one comment I would just like to add to that, I think certainly from our committee's perspective, is that uh, we did not want to wait to defer to the national debate. We did want to focus on Connecticut because given the way our constitution works, the state can make these changes. Um, and of course, that's, that's the focus today. Um, okay, I guess I should probably try and take some other questions. Um, maybe at the back there. Yeah, my name is <coughs> Just wait for the mic, please. <coughs> Excuse me, my name is Bob Davis, I'm from Madison. Um, first of all, I, I was in a home when I was seven years old that was, had two guys try and break in when my sister, who was 16, was babysitting at the time. She called the police. They went around to the back of the house, tried to come through our kitchen door. My sister at 16 met them with a 12 gauge shotgun. I was there. And she stared them down and they ran. So I, I, I literally <laughs> shot weapon saved my, my sister and I from harm. So it does happen, just as an aside. My question to you, though, is, I grew up shooting ski with my, my dad, my grandfather. Um, it's, a, it's very much a sport. Uh, I went, grew up duck hunting. I have wonderful over and under shotguns that have been handed down over generations of my family. Your law would require me to give those up. Question? That's my question. Okay. Is, yeah. My question is, what are you going to do when I won't give up an arrow? Are you going to come and seize it for me? Yeah, just, just to clarify that, um, I, I, a lot of shot, a lot of. Uh, Rifles, as I understand it, that are used for some of these things are single shot type rifles that are commonly kept in homes. I don't know if that was the type that your sister had. No. That was a multi cartridge. Okay. Semi automatic. Semi automatic. Yeah. Okay. It, what, one of the things that the state police uh, showed uh, my aide and me is that there very much are shotguns with, with a single shell uh, chamber. And uh, we held them, experimented with them, used them. So they, de they definitely exist. I I've been a skeet shooter too, and uh, I'd be very happy to use a, a single shell instead of a double barrel uh, shotgun. It doesn't really take very much to, to put another shell in, into the into the chain into the chamber. You know, we're talking about a safety issue in this state, in this country, and if it's, if it's, if we skeet shooters are going to have to add a sh shell by shell. That's a little, very small price to pay. Um, let's maybe go around, uh, we'll go around here in the middle, Sarah. So I'm a social worker. I just moved down here from Massachusetts. I was working in Lowell. Um, but my main question is, in my understanding from the young people I've worked with who have been involved with gun crimes, a lot of the guns are stolen from law-abiding citizens. Do you have any um, any statistics on how many guns used in crimes are stolen from folks who may be responsible? Thanks for that question. Maybe I, if I could add to that, um, if, if I could add in, one of the things that you saw on the issues list was the fact exactly that, that guns get stolen out of homes and sometimes because they're not locked up. Um, so is that issue being, how, how is that issue being handled? Yeah, the, um, we, we passed a law just last year that, that if, a, if a gun owner in his or her home finds that a gun has been stolen, you have a duty to report that theft within 72 hours to the state police. Uh, so that is, that is, that is one, uh, one, one thing we're doing. There's no doubt there's a lot of theft of, theft of guns. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, um, there's one bill pending that will make the theft of guns much easier. You may have read about it. One state representative has proposed that the gun permits that we've been granted be made public. And so the bad guys will know where the guns are, the homes and the addresses of where the guns are if he makes the permits public. And they can go and grab the guns. The bad guys also will know who doesn't have guns. Those are good homes to go to. So uh, making making the permits public is probably a disastrous idea. Three, and just the, specifically the safekeeping of guns, which is identified in the report as one of the issues where they're not they're not in locked safes. <coughs> if, if that can be, if, if a homeowner doesn't even have a safe, for example, a gun safe. Never used it. Is there, is there any legislation looking at that issue? Uh, 
Senator Bayh's bill, when you read it, uh, so the first page of the handout does go to that and, and, and will provide for more safekeeping uh, of, of guns. Interestingly, when we talked to the state police about uh, Adam Lanza uh, and his mother, uh, the state police told us their opinion was that Mrs. Lanza, the mother, was guilty of a crime, and that was a crime of reckless endangerment. Knowing what she did about her son, having guns available, uh, was, was what the law in Connecticut calls reckless endangerment, which is a felony. Okay. Um, Sarah, just for questions. Um, we'll take one from over there. Thank you so much for holding this forum. Um, I have a question. I know that you said that it's really difficult to do things with the mental health issues. But um, being the mother of five boys <laughs> and um, having some children with mental health issues, I'm curious about the under 18, whether or not a person who's under 18 and did spend time in the hospital, are those records available once the person is over 18 and applies for a gun? No. That's an embarrassment. That's wrong. Absolutely. <laughs> Unfortunately, Unfortunately, that's one of the problems law enforcement has when we are addressing uh, the permit issue and uh, the legality of gun ownership is mental health records, unless the person discloses them, they aren't available, especially for any mental health issues that occurred while that person was a juvenile. The laws in Connecticut are extremely strict when it comes to privacy regarding juveniles. You're, you're correct. It, it's not something that it's not something that I agree with that we would like to see changed. However, um, and I had this discussion with Senator Myers. For as ardent as the pro gun lobby is for the rights of people to own guns, you will get as strong, if not greater, pressure coming from the other side when it comes to civil rights, privacy. So, again, like I said, everybody has to be able to bring something to the table. There has to be some give and take here. Um, we're not going to solve this problem just with guns, but, again, that's where we're starting. Uh, the mental health issue is, is going to be a whole other debate. Um, uh, one of the statistics that um, uh, was um, sent to our committee um, from somebody who did some research on it, was that the majority, in fact 52% of mass shootings in the United States, the um, perpetrators had no mental health history whatsoever. Now you could argue obviously that anybody who commits, by definition, a mass shooting is mentally unstable. But I think no matter what legislation is introduced, if there's no history in the system of anybody ever having had a mental issue, you could only stop 48% of the events that have happened in the United States today. 52% would still occur because those people have never had any kind of history in any kind of place. But let's go on um, with some more questions. Um, maybe we'll take one from the back in the middle, Sarah. The gentleman there, look at the Bluetooth thing is here. Yeah. It's 12.15. Uh, yeah, we'll take um, this question and then one more question and then we'll give people the opportunity to um, uh, stay for a reflection on, um, on gun violence. Yeah. Thank you for your efforts. My name is Tony Capiano. I grew up in Guilford. In the 1970s, I was shot at while driving a tow truck in New Haven by a criminal. And I've obtained my carry permit then, and I've had it ever since. And with the grace of God, I never had to use a firearm. But my question to the senator is, I'm a law-abiding citizen. How am I going to protect myself against the people that don't follow your laws? Well, you know, my, my uh, bill uh, just describes a legal gun that was the same gun as existed when the Second Amendment was written. That's the bad guy. Okay? So, um, I, I, you know, I, I just, 
under the influence a bit of the police with whom I've had extensive conversations. I just don't believe we have in mo Bob Davis from Madison mentioned something in his family some years ago, but, but I don't believe we have a big self-defense issue here. Uh, I think that <laughs> the, fact, the fact is that people in, in this room believe that we have a serious self-defense issue. They believe there's, a, there's an evil enemy out there and that we need guns to defend ourselves. Uh, I'm older than most of you. I have not, I've been a federal prosecutor. I put a lot of people in jail for hundreds of years. I, I have not, in my life, experienced that ne necessity for self-defense that, that some people feel they should have. But that clearly will be the argument in the debate as we go forward in Hartford. Um, there is some research, I think Ed probably referred to a little bit, I think it's out of Harvard, um, that has shown that um, nationally, ignoring Connecticut, including the South, the, the entire country, the very convincing statistics that more people are killed in homes, more family members are killed by, by, by obtaining a weapon they shouldn't have than any instances of self-defense. I mean, the, the, the statistics are absolutely clear. So whatever is in Connecticut, nationally, the statistics are, are very, very clear on that. And we're going to take one more question, the gentleman in the black, and then um, uh, I'll talk about what we'll do after that. Sure. Thanks very much, Senator. Thank you uh, for having the floor. My name is Matt Keller from Madison. Officer, I wanted to address this question to you, and just very simply. If either one of the bills were to become law that we see on our handout today, would that make it less likely that another child would be killed in the state of Connecticut? It is a, that's a very, it's a good question, very difficult to answer. Um, honestly, I don't know. I can tell you the wish and desire, I think, of everybody in this room is to not see another Newtown tragedy. Realistically, from a law enforcement standpoint, we know we can't stop them. We, you can't. Our society, there are too many issues. They are not going to stop. But we need to do everything we can to minimize these incidents, make their frequency a lot less than they are now. So, can I stand here and tell you that if, if we enact every law that another child is not going to die? No, absolutely not. But does that mean we shouldn't try? That's something you're going to have to answer for yourself. And would you want to make a closing comment? Let me just expand on that a bit. I, I, did, I was influenced again by the, the statistics, some of which uh, Craig referred to in his remarks. And that is the number of, of guns that are uh, in the United States. I think it's like 270 million compared to other countries where the homicide, gun homicide rate is so terribly low, less than 100 a year. The number of weapons is, that's in a society, is a relevant factor. And uh, while the bills that, that you have here, the two bills, Senator Biden's bill and my bill, don't, don't actually necessarily reduce the number, they clearly reduce the components of that 270 million guns. Thank, thank you, Ed. Thank you, everybody, for coming and for being able to, um, I, I know there's a lot of people who have a lot more questions and a lot more comments, um, but um, this is a church adult education forum, and I think we've certainly tried um, to give people the opportunity to, to um, air some views in the limited 45 minutes that we have. Um, we're now going to conclude with um, a prayer on gun violence. So those of you who do not wish to stay for that are welcome to leave um, right now. And while uh, people who do not wish to um, go through the prayer on gun violence leave, I'll ask Shannon to help hand up. We have, a, a, we have more than, I think we have more than a few for each row, so. Is the, uh...